I'm going to go through an overview of metabolism, looking at glucose from when that is oxidized to producing ATP. I've got here a mitochondria. We know that some of that reaction starts outside in the cytosol of eukaryotic cells, and some of it occurs in the matrix. And then oxidative phosphorylation occurs on this inner mitochondrial membrane that we have around. So if we look at glucose, we know that glucose is broken down to pyruvate and that's done in glycolysis. So glycolysis is about splitting sugar. So we go from a six carbon molecule to two three carbon molecules in glycolysis. And that's a reaction that produces two ATP. So we get two ATP um, net being produced in that. So when we're oxidizing glucose, the electrons are being transferred on to NAD plus to give us NADH. And it's NADH that is being used to power ultimately the production of ATP. So coming off here, I'll just draw the two NADH that are being produced again by glycolysis. Um, our two pyruvates, so I'll put the two here because one glucose, two pyruvates, enter into the matrix. So there's a transporter that transports them into the mitochondrial matrix. And an enzyme um, inside the cell takes our pyruvate. I'll put it again here inside the cell and converts it to acetyl-CoA. And the enzyme that does this is called pyruvate dehydrogenase. And in the process where our pyruvate becomes acetyl-CoA, so this is a three carbon molecule, we have it becoming a two carbon molecule and carbon dioxide is also produced in that process. And we have NADH produced again. Now, if you look back here, because we have two pyruvate coming in, we then have two pyruvate from glucose that are undergoing the reaction by pyruvate dehydrogenase and we get two acetyl-CoA being produced. So up here we'll put two NADH. The acetyl-CoA is then entering the TCA cycle. So here is our TCA cycle. And the products of that are we have a GTP, which is equivalent to an ATP. And again, we have two acetyl-CoA coming in. So we have two GTP being produced ultimately from oxidizing um, glucose. Other products of the TCA cycle are our NADH. And for each round of the TCA cycle, we have three NADH being produced. Now remember that's occurring twice, so we actually end up with six being produced. And we also have an FADH2 being produced. So again, FADH2 is an oxygen carrier, oh sorry, an electron carrier. So our electrons have been transferred to FAD plus to give us FADH2. So there's two of those because we have two cycles um, from the oxidation of glucose. The other thing that we have occurring here is oxidative phosphorylation. So in the mitochondrial matrix, we have our electron transport chain and we have ATP synthesis. So I'll write just oxphos here. So here's our inner mitochondrial membrane. So our reduced electron carriers, NADH and FADH2, transfer their electrons onto the electron transport chain. We get a proton gradient being produced across the inner mitochondrial membrane, and that drives production of ATP by ATP synthase. We know that we from 
2.5, sorry, from 1 NADH, we power the production of 2.5 ATP. And from an FADH to we power the production of 1.5 ATP. So we're going to go through and look at the ATP that's been produced in metabolism here. And the NADH and FADH2 molecules. And we're going to work out how many ATP are being produced by the oxidation of glucose. So we start off here in glycolysis. So I'll summarize it down the, down the bottom here. In glycolysis, we had this 2 ATP being produced. So I'll write here 2 ATP. We also had 2 NADH being um, produced in that process. So if we look at what happens to the NADH, that comes into the mitochondria. And if we think of those electrons as coming across into the electron transport chain, we have 2 NADH times 2.5 gives us an 5 ATP because they power the production of 5 ATP. So that's what we get from glucose. We'll come back to something interesting about those NADH in a minute. The next thing that we can look at is our pyruvate. So our pyruvate has come into the mitochondria. It's got oxidized by pyruvate dehydrogenase and we have two NADH being produced there. So again, we're going to multiply this two NADH, so two times 2.5 from pyruvate dehydrogenase we get another 5 ATP ultimately being produced. So we'll tick off that one as well and this one that we counted for up here. In the TCA cycle we have a lot of products. So in the TCA cycle we have our two GTP here which we say are ATP equivalents. So let's count them as two I'm going to start putting plus because I'm running out of room. Um, we have our 6 NADH here. So our 6 NADH times 2.5 gives us 15. And then we have our 2 FADH. Now FADH, remember that they enter the electron transport chain at complex 3 and they generate less of a gradient to power ATP synthase. So we multiply them by 1.5. So here's our extra 3 ATP there. So we'll cross off, tick off this one and this one here. And then we'll need to add them up. So what we have, so 15, 20, 25, 30, 32. So what we come to a total of here is a total of 32 ATP being produced from the oxidation of a glucose molecule. There's one thing that can happen though. This NADH here is being produced in the cytosol and you can see it's being transported across the inner mitochondrial membrane which is selectively permeable into the matrix. Now we can have it transported through as NADH but we do have some transporters where those electrons are taken from NADH and actually transferred onto FADP to give us FADH2. And in that case, those electrons, when they come and are transferred to the electron transport chain, generate less ATP. So sometimes we will say that there are actually 30 ATP being produced from the oxidation of glucose because those produced, the NADH produced in the cytosol as a product of glycolysis can be worth less than NADH being produced in the mitochondrial matrix.